One of my earliest videos with the Vetus Nucleus, I installed this 140 millimeter AliExpress fork, and it's one of my most popular videos to date. But the truth is, I only use this fork for that video. It seemed a lot of people are interested in putting a long travel fork on this bike. And that got me thinking, 120 millimeter fork for this bike is not enough anymore. That's why I picked up this RockShox Yari fork, which is 160 millimeters travel. Might be a little too much and it might make the geometry a little bit wonky, but let's make this nucleus extreme. This Manitou Markor fork has been amazing. I have no complaints about it, and it's been on two different bikes, the Axum and the Nucleus, and it's a great entry-level air fork, and I picked it up for $250. If I had to do it all over again, though, I would have went with the used market. I picked up this RockShox Yari fork for $350. But for those who don't know, RockShox Yari is dang near top of the line. And it did take me about two months to find a deal this good, but the used market is definitely the way to go. But the big problem is that this is 160 millimeters travel. So I'm not sure what that's gonna do to the nucleus geometry. And I don't think this frame is made for 160 millimeters travel. So let's go ahead and slap this thing on. We'll take some measurements and then we'll see what the head tube angle is. Well, these forks do look pretty amazing on this bike, but something just seems off. I think it's the tires. With a monster fork like this, I gotta go with monster tires. While these Vittoria Barzo tires have served me well, I need some beefy, thicker tires to match the fork. And I'm glad I did this because there's absolutely zero stand sealant left in the front tire. So now I'm busting out the old Maxxis Minion DHF tire that I originally had on the Schwinn Axum. It's 2.6 inches wide and can be found on Amazon for $67. I also picked up a Maxxis Aggressor, which is 2.5 inches wide, and it's also $67 on Amazon. And I liked it so much and it's really confidence inspiring and it has a great traction too. These large volume tires really soften the trail clatter and I'm still gonna use the nuke proof ARD insert in the rear just to protect the rim from rim strikes. So hopefully it doesn't stretch out and sound like a basketball like it did on the Mythique. Well, I got all the measurements and the wheelbase was 1,051 millimeters and is now 1,168 millimeters. So we've added 17 millimeters to the wheelbase. Should make it a little bit more stable. We lost a couple degrees on the C-tube angle. It was, it was 73 and is now 71 degrees, which that brought the C-tube angle back, which will probably be noticeable on the climbs. And the head tube angle, it used to be 67 degrees. It is now, 65.5 degrees. And that's right up there with those hardcore enduro hardtails. So I'm pretty excited to see how this is gonna ride. Let's go to the trail. This bike just looks sick now. I'll be honest, I haven't been excited to ride this bike since I got the Mythique, cause hardtails are kind of hard on your butt. But now with this long travel Yari fork, we're really pushing this platform to its limits. I did bring my shock pump with me. RockShox recommends that I ran 69 PSI in the fork, which seems kind of low to me. So let's go ahead and get to it.
Well, I messed up on the shot, so that was actually my fourth time hitting the drop, and I just now see the fork bottomed out. So maybe 69 PSI is working. And even with this fork, hitting drops on a hardtail is still not fun. But let's keep riding. Well, the ride is done. Man, this bike is so transformed now. I wish I would have just done this in the beginning. 100 extra dollars, I could have got a Yari fork instead of the Manitou fork. And that's definitely the way to go. 